Pennsylvania State Trooper Bo O'Toole is assigned to take a look at the old evidence with fresh eyes. I became the lead investigator in the case. I knew who Shauna's family was, and I knew Shauna's mother, Lucy. Prior to this ever taking place, they lived literally two blocks from where I grew up and I lived. A lot of cases go cold, but this one is, this is the worst it gets. And this is one of those ones where if you only solved one case, this is the one you, you'd want to solve. Body suit was just up here on the left-hand side of this along the along the road right here. It was just a little bit over here off to the bridge side. So this was a place people came, young kids came to party or young couples would come or what have you. It was a known area and it was a known out of the way area. It was a known area that you weren't going to have a lot of travelers on. That bridge, there's a roof and there's a ceiling and you're not going to be able to look down upon that. Obviously, you just don't have police on patrol out here. You just don't have the neighbor walking by. You don't have somebody, like it's a bike trail now, but nobody brought their bike out here to ride. People come out here for a reason. The reason is you're going to be by yourself. You're going to be alone. Nobody's going to come to this area and disturb you, and that's what they did. Finding the bodysuit uh, really intensified the investigation because right then it's looking like it's not just a missing person but a kidnapping of some sort and then a sexual assault has taken place. So it really intensified things and made things um, more clear as to what was going on. The bodysuit was found the day before she was found. The next day is when Shauna was, was discovered. And uh, around this curve and over to the other side, that's where she was discovered, so it wasn't far from here. This is the bridge where Shauna would have been thrown off of into the little creek down here. By looking out here, you can kind of see what it used to look like, what this was before. It was just a railroad bridge. It's been obviously updated, made safer for a bike trail. There was no railing here. There was nothing uh, put on here for safety. This was an, uh, just an abandoned uh, railroad bridge. You know, it still had the railroad ties in it. Uh, and at nighttime, this would have been as dark as dark can be. This is, uh, you know, there's no street lights, so seeing the edge of the bridge or seeing where exactly she was, I think that would have been a tough thing for anybody to do, let alone a little girl like that. So that's where the, the shoes were in this area. That was her last steps were right here, and that's where she went off. And this was the side she was found on, down here. When she went off, she might have hit something over here. There's even a some rebar that was out. It had some blood on it. There was an injury to her that some feel that could have been caused by that rebar, by her falling and hitting that. And right down here is where she was. After she fell, she was probably alive for a little bit. She, uh, Probably was down there just wondering what was going to happen and wondering if there's anybody that was going to come and help her, if there's anybody that could help her. And she was hanging on for life there for a little bit in an agonizing way that the average person can't even fathom. I just wish she would have been able to live her life, and I just wish that, um, I just wish her name was known for different reasons other than this because. Her name brings a sadness that just can't be matched when you think about it.